Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the President of UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, and the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, attended a lunch banquet hosted by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in Marmoum on the occasion of his victory in the World Endurance Championship, held in Abu Dhabi with the participation of 126 riders from 36 countries. The banquet was also attended by the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Advisor of Special Affairs at the Ministry of Presidential Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamad bin Tanun Al Nayan. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended the 160 km World Endurance Championship, which was launched in Bahdaib Endurance Village in Abu Dhabi in the UAE, which was held under the patronage of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Presidential Court, His Highness Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan, and organised by the International Equestrian Federation, with the participation of the Royal Team, led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs. Leader of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty followed the competitions of this international championship in which riders from the Kingdom of Bahrain participated, along with 126 male and female riders, representing 36 countries from different continents of the world. His Majesty expressed his pride in the deep root and distinguished historical relations that bind the two brotherly countries, which are getting stronger and more prosperous at various levels, which reflects its global leadership and good reputation especially in terms of hosting major international sporting events with the best standards. His Majesty congratulated His Highness Sheikh Nasser on winning the first place and crowning him with the title of the World Endurance Championship, which witnessed strong competition and enjoyed the participation of elite, of the most prominent riders and the best horses from all over the world. His Majesty expressed his pride in achieving this honourable global historical achievement to the Kingdom, which has added to the record of His Highness's achievements in various international sporting events and competitions. His Majesty praised the great effort made by His Highness in preparing for this championship and the level of distinguished sports performance that he showed, which qualified him to win this world championship with all merit, which also confirms the advanced position enjoyed by the Bahraini endurance sport and the continuous development it is witnessing. His Majesty wished His Highness all success in leading the sports march towards more world championships and titles. His Majesty affirmed that the sport of endurance is an ancient sport due to its connection with the region's history and heritage, and that we are always keen to provide support and provide all the elements for its advancement and development. He wished all the riders participating continued success and progress in the upcoming participations.
With the follow-up of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and leader of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, recorded a major international achievement by winning the World Fed Endurance Championship that was held in the UAE for a distance of 160 kilometres with the participation of 126 riders representing 36 countries around the world in Bitheb Global Village. His Highness achieved first place in his career in the international and Bahraini endurance sport and recorded a new chapter of achievements for the Bahraini sport in general and the sport of endurance in particular as proof that the Bahraini endurance is dominating the world in light of the achievements of the royal team over the past years to conclude the 2022 championships with its largest titles represented by the 2022 world championship title. The championship was supposed to be held last year, but it was postponed to the current year, so it will be the second world championship within a few months after the title of the world championship for small horses that His Highness won in Spain in the last quarter of last year. On this occasion, His Highness extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King on the occasion of this great achievement, which has added to the series of achievements in the prosperous era of His Majesty, the greatest supporter of Bahraini sports in general and the sport of endurance in particular. His Highness stressed that with the follow-up and attendance of His Majesty has the greatest impact on achieving the World Championship title. His Highness expressed his appreciation and thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for his continued support for Bahraini sports and endurance sports. He affirmed that the stages witnessed by the Championship were difficult and strong in light of the windy weather that accompanied the race and others, indicating that he was able to overcome these difficult and strong stages with success. He indicated that the World Championship always witnesses the participation of elite riders from different countries of the world, and that the competition for the first positions was open and strong among the participating riders. His Highness said that there were fluctuations in the race in a diversity of positions after each stage, but he was able to maintain the lead after the second round. And the competition was strong with UAE riders in addition to Britain, Spain and Uruguay, and this confirmed that the competition was open and strong. His Highness affirmed the success of the UAE in hosting the championship and directing it in the best organisational way represents the success of Bahrain as well, expressing his great happiness with the organisational level that accompanied the event and confirms the distinguished capabilities of the UAE. His Highness won the World Championship title outperforming a group of world riders as he imposed his dominance on the six stages of the championship amid strong and exciting competition with the riders of the UAE, Uruguay and Spain where His Highness finished the race in a time of 7 hours, 36 minutes and 39 seconds. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa was keen to follow and support His Highness Sheikh Nasser throughout the stages of the race, as his presence and encouragement was a great motivation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser, and he congratulated him on this occasion.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa following the achievement acclaimed by the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian works and youth affairs and the captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who won first place in the FEI Endurance World Championship, making him the champion of the 160km race in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. In his cable, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended Bahrain's achievements in all sports competitions, regionally and globally, in particular the endurance sports, thanks to the support of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the role of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad in supporting the sports sector in the Kingdom, noting the outstanding performance of the Royal Endurance Team in the Championship. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the representative of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, for humanitarian work and youth affairs, and Captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and winning first place in the FEI Endurance World Championship, making him the champion of the 160km race in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister noted that the achievement is a result of the visions and support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Kingdom sports sector. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the role played by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad, noting that the global achievements are a source of pride for the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister praised His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad's efforts, preparations and performance emphasising Bahrain's ongoing efforts to achieve its wide-ranging aspirations and goals. The Shura Council held its weekly session, presided over by its chairman, Ali Al Saleh. The Council did a final review of the draft law amending the agreements between the governments of Bahrain and the UK on air services. The Council approved a report regarding a draft law amending the cooperation agreement in the field of maritime and port transport between the governments of Bahrain and Oman. A meeting was held, attended by judges in the presence of the Attorney General, Dr Ali al Buenian, with the Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council and Chairman of the Cassation Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali al Khalifa, presented a draft plan for judicial development for the year 2023. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali said that the meeting aims to hold discussion and exchange opinions and proposals regarding developing the judicial system in the Kingdom through various initiatives. He stressed the importance of what has been achieved at the level of fast settlement of cases and decisions, taking into account the guarantees of litigation and the requirements of prompt justice, which is the resolution of disputes at the appropriate speed. The Development Action Plan focuses on the priority of enhancing the quality of judgments and decisions in a way that contributes to unifying stable judicial principles and increasing the ability to predict judgments through the implementation of several initiatives. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr Mohamed bin Dana, chaired the meeting of the Sea Level Rise Committee, devoted to discussing the outputs of the second phase of the draft adoption plan for sea level rise. The Minister affirmed the directives of His Majesty the King and the keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to implement projects and programmes aimed at adapting to the effects of climate change, especially the plan to adapt to sea level rise, which aims to enhance proactive measures to protect coastal areas in the Kingdom and raise the level of flexibility in dealing with the effects of climate change.
The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Iyasa Hamedan, stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation between the various ministries and government agencies following the one-team approach adopted by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in order to achieve the optimal use of resources, national competencies and expertise. He added that the Ministry is launching a series of workshops to work on updating the National Renewable Energy Plan and the National Energy Efficiency Plan to reach zero neutrality by 2060. The first workshop was launched at the Ministry's headquarters as a propriety workshop and focused on the consultative process with the Ministries and authorities concerned with the initiatives of the two national plans in order to take their views into preparing the public tender file that will be presented during the current year in the form of a request for proposals. The World Health Organization announced the approval of Busatine and Alsaya as healthy cities in accordance with the organization's system and requirements, including health, social, cultural and sports facilities. Regional Director of the World Health Organization for the Eastern Mediterranean, Dr. Ahmed Almandari, handed over the certificate of accreditation to the Maharat Governor, Salman bin Isa bin Hindi Al Manai, in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan who confirmed that the accreditation of the WHO is an embodiment of the expansion of this ambitious programme and an affirmation of the continuous efforts and work of the Government of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Maharat Governor stressed that this certificate is considered a motive and a real beginning for expanding the accreditation of all cities and villages of the Kingdom. Dr Almandari stressed that the expanding network of healthy cities in Bahrain reflects the Kingdom's endeavour to provide urban communities with better opportunities for health and wellness. The Northern Governorate celebrated the accreditation of Ali, a healthy city, by the World Health Organization, the WHO, as part of the Global Healthy Cities Programme, in a ceremony held to receive the official accreditation certificate from the regional representative of the WHO. The Minister of Health, Dr Jalila Hassan, praised the Northern Governorate for its role, efforts and cooperation with the WHO to achieve this goal and to implement many effective community initiatives and partnerships. For his part, the Northern Governor Ali Alasfer expressed pleasure at obtaining the certificate. The Regional Director of the WHO, Dr Ahmed Al Mandari, stated that the advancement of the organisation's programme for healthy cities can be strengthened only by cooperation through national, regional and global networks, praising the adoption of Ali as a healthy city that conforms with the standards of the WHO. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakro, head of Bahrain's delegation, participating in the meetings of the Executive Committee and the Higher Committee meeting of the Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development held in Amman, in the presence of the UAE, Jordanian, Egyptian Ministers of Industry. The Minister of Industry said that Bahrain's accession to the Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development contributed to enhancing the development of the industrial sector, with over 10 proposals for industrial projects in which an estimated value of initial investments exceeded $2 billion. He affirmed that the partnership includes industries in which Bahrain is involved for the first time, such as manufacturing electric cars and developing modern technologies in the fields of pharmaceutical industries. Following the directors of His Majesty the King and under the support of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, the President of the Campaign to Support Earthquake Victims in Turkey and Syria, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, sent the second relief aid shipment to Turkey. For his part, the RHF Secretary General, Dr Mustafa Al Sayed, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his humanitarian initiatives healing the support the Foundation receives from the Government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the follow-up of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. He also expressed thanks to the people of Bahrain for their contribution to the success of the campaign, affirming that the aid will continue to be delivered. He asserted that the campaign continues to receive aid and implement aid projects in Syria and Turkey. The course of civilian volunteers for the reserve force of the BDF at the fourth batch was launched as a continuation of the first stage, which reflects the loyalty and belonging of the people of Bahrain to their homeland. More in this report. 
The people of the Kingdom of Bahrain, including relatives of workers and retirees in the BDF and the National Guard, showed their great enthusiasm and joy on the sidelines of the inauguration of the course for civilian volunteers in the reserve force of the BDF, which was held in the Military Sports Federation with motivation to defend this land and serving its people, which reflects their loyalty and belonging to the kingdom. The volunteers affirmed their honor of serving in the BDF and their high readiness in order to defend the homeland, pledging to Allah the Almighty to do their duty and assume their patriotic responsibility. The volunteers are competing for this historic national event for joining the BDF as it is the sanctuary of heroes and the first shield to defend the kingdom as it works on the preservation of its capabilities and national gains. The people of Bahrain participating in the reserve force affirm their determination to protect their homeland with motivation and persistence. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division concluded its participation in the 34th Conference of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, which was held in Baghdad, under the title Arab Support for Strengthening Iraq's Stability and Sovereignty. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division stressed the importance of these participations in strengthening the Kingdom's regional status. During the conference, the presidency of the Union was transferred from Bahrain to Iraq, and the Speaker of the Representatives' Council and former President of the Arab Parliamentary Union, Ahmed Amisalem was honoured. The report of the Union's Executive Committee activities since the 32nd Conference was also reviewed. The Prime Minister of Iraq, Mohammed al sadani received the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel al Assoumi. The Prime Minister praised the distinction of Iraqi-Bahraini relations, stressing the keenness on strengthening them at various levels. He expressed appreciation for the relentless steps taken by His Majesty the King in supporting strategic relations that are in the interest of the two brotherly peoples and all Arab peoples. al Sudani praised His Majesty's efforts in supporting the security and stability of the region and promoting joint Arab action, as well as the support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. During the meeting, al Sudani stressed Iraq's keenness to strengthen cooperation with the Arab Parliament especially in light of the challenges facing the Arab nation. The Secretary-General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Niad, Sheikh Maram bin Isa Al Khalifa, held a press conference during which she announced the most prominent details of the Bahrain International Garden Show. The exhibition will include a number of local and foreign participations and a number of programmes directed to various family members, in addition to presenting educational and knowledge aspects of the rich information provided by the exhibition and opportunities to exchange experiences and opinions and learn about the latest innovations. Sheikh Maram said the exhibition is a unique opportunity as it is a trade fair that contributes to creating important opportunities for the participating institutions to develop the business and expand the scope of their activities locally, regionally and internationally. More than 176 exhibitors are expected to participate in the Bahrain International Garden Show in 2023 with their designs, products, technologies and innovations. The Protection and Safety Directorate of the General Directorate of Civil Defence continues to hold evacuation exercises in various schools across the Kingdom. More in this report. The Protection and Safety Directorate of the General Directorate of Civil Defence held an evacuation exercise at the British School. The drill aimed to evaluate the readiness of the school's security and safety team and enhance awareness of security and safety procedures. It also aimed to get the faculty ready to deal with emergencies. The Civil Defense conducts evacuation drills often to inform occupants of any occupancy about the emergency exit and the emergency measures they can take in any case of emergency. Evacuation drills helps us measure the readiness of any safety supervisor at any occupancy we visit and conduct emergency drills at because the emergency supervisors, they will do our job until we arrive at the place of emergency. And it also helps the General Directorate of Civil Defense to measure the time of response and readiness of their fire trucks and firemen. 
Uh, we have a wonderful working relationship with the civil defence. Uh, they're incredibly supportive of us. Uh, they inspect us every year uh, and also give us uh, great advice on how to make sure that the community is safe. Uh, we're incredibly grateful for what they do for us as a school, but equally what they do for the wider community, keeping us safe at home, keeping us safe on the roads and keeping us obviously safe here at school. Um, safety and uh, the happiness and the security of the students is our number one priority uh, and everything that the civil defence does for us is wonderfully appreciated so that we can keep our children uh, being educated in a fantastic environment but most importantly in a safe environment. You always need to pay attention to your teacher and remember the fire drill point and assembly point. Thank you to the civil defense for keeping us safe at home, on the roads and at school. The exercise covered 2,795 teachers and students from all educational levels. In the framework of the 60th anniversary of the Elysee Treaty, the German Embassy, the French Embassy and the Alliance Francaise in Bahrain jointly organised a photography exhibition entitled Difference Builds Friendship. The exhibition was held on Thursday in the presence of the German Ambassador Clemens Hack, the French Ambassador Jérôme Couchard as well as the Director of the Alliance Francaise Céline Martin. After the opening of the exhibition, a prize-giving ceremony was held for three photographs selected by the jury from the three categories of participants, children, adult amateurs and professional photographers. The opening ceremony was attended by a group of invited guests from the diplomatic corps, a number of Bahraini dignitaries and a number of artists and photographers in various fields.